Okay, and welcome to Ag Talking to Raw. I do believe it is Thursday, the 15th, March 15th. Yes, that's what it is. All right, I want to say thanks for all the welcome backs. It's nice to be back. Uh, we do, you know, we do these trips, and it's really hard coming back into the swing of things after being away for. Uh, you know, the 18 days that I was gone, being on the other side of the planet, it kind of doesn't help with the jet lag. And I'm up in the middle of the night and, uh, you know, watching murder mysteries because I like those. And it makes you realize that there's evil people no matter where you are. And there's a lot of evil people in the United States. So, anyways, we'll get on with this thing. Okay. Ah. Uh, Smack that coffin, plain bitch. Yeah, that's about what I felt like. Uh, I wonder what I said at 1754 that I lost him. Theo Kister, Kuster, Kuster. Uh, welcome back. Hope you had a great trip. I'm just trying to find some... Uh, um, this year, the Toronto School Board ended the police officer in schools program saying it was racist. Well, how's that racist? I mean... Uh, that's kind of funny. Well, you know, in going into the schools, I guess this is where we're going to be with this this ag talk. We're not going to be talking about agriculture. We're going to talk about schools and uh, and firearms and things like that. So my son, Joseph, he's still in high school. He's a senior this year, and he comes along to the farm, and he says, Well, Dad, they're going to do this national walkout, nationwide walkout, and protest um, the lack of gun control. And I was like, oh, my God. You just leave it to these liberal left-wing jackasses to think that um, gun control is going to stop a madman from having uh, a gun. I mean, when you're nuts, you don't give a shit about the rules. And it's just so stupid to even think that uh, gun control in the United States is going to stop criminals from doing what they're going to do. It's just asinine. And these school, these school boards and uh, school officials, they're just dumber than shit on a shingle. I mean, that's just all you can say about them. They're so stupid. They, it's a wonder they can even breathe. And these are the type of people that are teaching our kids. I mean, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I have firearms in my home. I don't go out and kill people, and neither do my guns. Um, for the most part, they're locked away. Uh, the ones that I don't use are locked in a safe. The ones that are here for my protection in case somebody comes into my house are readily available, handy, and ready to rock and roll. So, you know, I do have the right to defend myself even here in the great state of New Jersey. But I don't go out with them and looking for trouble. I do target practice, you know, quite often. Um, but for the love of God, why is it that people think that if you make a law criminals are going to follow that raw law and by making it harder for people like me to get a firearm is going to stop a criminal from doing what they do and these anyways with him saying that they were going to do this national walkout he's like well i don't want to participate in a walkout he's like well you don't have to he says yeah but it's it's not really a walkout because we're never leaving the school we're actually just going to the auditorium so i guess it's an assembly it's like, well, if they're calling it a walkout and you don't want to participate because you don't feel the uh, passionate about what they're forcing you to do, just go to class or walk out in protest of the walkout. And I don't mean walk out to the auditorium. I mean walk out into the parking lot and take all your friends that don't feel the same way as these left-wing liberal jackasses known as teachers and administrators want you to do. Um, just... Be, be prepared. There is going to be consequences. Now, if you just go to your school or your classroom where you're scheduled to be that, that day or that hour in their assembly walkout protest of, you know, the lack of gun control, um, then that teacher actually has to be in that classroom and cannot participate in the national walkout. So I haven't heard anything, you know, he didn't say anything whether he did what he said he wanted to do. Um, yet i'm going over to his house today he lives with his mom now and uh, i'm going to go over there this morning and find out what actually happened i do know that he ended up in detention he told me that um but you know it is what it is so yeah the, um gun control i don't care how many laws you pass people you know look at look at the world the world stage you know uh if you're going to take guns away from U.S. citizens, you're, you're going to have a fight on your hands, and it's not going to be a friendly, and it's not going to be peaceful protest. It's going to be a bloody mess. Uh, so you can't just say, hey, turn in your firearms, because that's not going to happen. Uh, the, 
if you want to uh, regulate law-abiding citizens, you're not going to solve any issues other than pissing off law-abiding citizens. And they'll vote your ass out, you know? Donald Trump backed down pretty quickly when the NRA said, hey, you know what? You can't do that. And he agreed and finally decided that, you know what? It's a mental health issue. So, uh, yeah, stronger background checks. You know, here in New Jersey, I have to go through literally hell in order to get a firearm. I have this thing. It's in my wallet. I'll show it to you. It's a card. And it has my name and number on it. I'm tagged. This little guy here has my name. I pr I signed my name in protest. It said use black or blue ink. I used red. And uh, every time I go to buy a firearm with this piece of paper, they look at the red signature and I'm like, that's pretty good. We've never actually had anybody do that before. Well, I'm, I, I protest this. I mean, this is bullshit. If, if you're a law-abiding citizen, you don't have a criminal record. You know, once you, you give them the other number you're not supposed to be using as identification, that's known as the uh, Social Security card. Uh, once you give them that number, they should know everything about you anyway. So why do I need to be, you know, have this card? Now, I've had that card for 20-some-odd years, and I haven't killed anybody yet, and I've always been able to buy a firearm when I needed one, and, uh, you know, no big deal. But stricter background checks in New Jersey ain't going to do any good because we're already... Uh, stringently, I mean, I guess they could make us uh, renew this thing every year or something silly like that or every couple, three years to see if we're nuts or not. But when you go to buy a new firearm, you get this, this, uh, the, you have to call the ATF and you have to, you have to be approved by the ATF anyway. And that's nationwide already. So I got this New Jersey thing where I have to have, I think it's three people vouch for me. And, uh, you know, I'll have to go through the police background check plus the, uh, you know, when you go to buy the actual firearm and a handgun permit. If I want to buy a handgun, I have to go. That's a whole nother set of paperwork. And they issue me a permit to purchase a handgun. They say, hey, you know, this guy's OK to purchase a handgun so he can go do that, which is a whole nother process and a whole nother uh, voucher system. It's a real pain in the balls. But what do they want now? I mean, I don't see law-abiding citizens going into schools and shooting them up. I don't see law-abiding citizens going down to the local 7-Eleven and shooting the clerk to steal $25. You know, I don't see that happening. All I see is criminals that have obtained firearms illegally by means of theft, mostly, or theft from other thieving fools. Um, so go ahead, just, just stack it up against the law-abiding citizens, you know. Criminals are criminals. They're not going to follow your stupid rules. These walkouts are a joke. Uh, grow up, you stupid teachers. Go Grow up, you stupid administrators, and realize that you're just stupid. You shouldn't even be teaching our kids. Um, if I had it to do over again, I won't send my children to public school because they're corruptionists. They corrupt their minds, make them think that, Every single rule that they put in front of them is the gospel, and you have to follow that rule. You know, we, we have lost our rights along the way to do so many things. You know, I posted a video on One Lonely Farmer's channel uh, about uh, the freedoms that are in the Philippines. Uh, and there, you are freer there. I don't give a flying fuck what you say. You are, we are freer in the Philippines when we go there. Yes, there are things you cannot do. I, as a, uh, a traveling uh, visitor to the country, would never stand up and say anything negative about their leader. I'm a guest there. I want to have a good time while I'm there. And you know what? If I was to ever move there, I'm still, I'm not a citizen. I would just be a guest anyway with a visa that is, you know, a year long or whatever I choose to do if I do choose to go there. Um <coughs> You know, you follow the rules. You be respectful when you go to other countries. Uh, you know, and it's the same way it should be here. Uh, there's a lot of Americans that go there and think that they're going to uh, reflect the American way upon the Philippines and other countries that I've been to. And you just end up in trouble, you know. So know your rules, know your laws, know what you can and can't say while you're there, and you'll have a good time and things will be good. 
but also know that you can drive down the road without a motorcycle helmet on if you want. Uh, you can you can bungee cord a lawn chair into a tricycle and go down the road if you want. You're not going to get pulled over and arrested and fined like the revenuers we know as the state police from one end of this country to the other. They are revenuers. They don't stop crime. They show up after the crime and try to solve the crime with really a low, low success rate. And uh, if they think that you're guilty, you are guilty before you ever go into the courtroom. Believe me, I had an issue with a uh, a police officer and an animal control officer a couple of years ago where me and Timothy were, and I made a video of it, me and Timothy were run through the court system with absolutely no proof whatsoever, and we had a decent judge that said, um, you can't, these people are not guilty until proven innocent, they're innocent until proven guilty, and you've proved nothing, that there hasn't even been a crime committed, and, you know, it cost me thousands of dollars and a whole lot of bullshit, and it makes you really look at the, uh, the police you know, the state police, local police, or whatever, police and people that are there to serve and protect us, you look at them in a different light. Like, you are a name and a case on their resume for their next job or their next promotion. And it's really sad that it's gone that way. And I'm not saying every policeman is that way. And I'm not saying that every every uh, 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 um, you know branch of the police were you know protection agencies that we have are like that but you know we just had a recent problem as I came through the uh, JFK um, they asked us if we had anything that we needed to report through customs and Teresa's like no we didn't we didn't buy anything we need to report and the guy was like well I know you bought something and I didn't say anything Teresa was talking she's like well yeah nothing just some souvenirs and things and uh, he, he said, you didn't stop at any markets? And I was like, well, actually, we didn't. Uh, that's when I piped up. And he says, you're telling me that you went to the Philippines and you never stopped at any of the markets? And honestly, we didn't. We went to grocery stores, but we didn't go to the open-air markets and buy stuff to uh, as souvenirs and stuff. We just, you know, there's souvenirs all over that country. Uh, we stopped along the road. That's not a market. Those are little stores. But we didn't actually go to a market. And the guy got all huff, huffy and puffy with us. He's like... I know you. there's markets in the Philippines, and I know that you went to those markets, and I know you probably bought something. And it's like, well, what we bought was negligible. I mean, I don't even think we bought $100 worth of souvenirs to bring back to the United States. And uh, he says, well, they sell counterfeit uh, leather goods there, and, you know, do you have any? I was like, I said to him, I says, A, she wouldn't let me buy anything counterfeit, and B, we didn't buy anything counterfeit. And, uh, you know, he's just like, this isn't my first day at the, on the job. My job is to know. And, you know, they're just douchebags. They put on a badge and they got this big bulletproof vest on and are like looking down at you as though you are a criminal. Even though we're coming home. We, you know, this, no matter what you say, I still love the United States. I love to live here. I love to visit the Philippines. I loved visiting Japan. I loved visiting Taiwan. I loved visiting Belgium. I loved visiting England. I loved France. You know, everywhere I go, I love to go. Um, but it's always nice to come home. Uh, what's not nice about coming home is when you run into an asshole TSA agent like that. And, you know, I get that he's got thousands of people coming through there every single day, but it was like, what was it, 8 o'clock in the morning? And this guy was such a douchebag. I mean, he, he got up, and his wife took a tinkle in his Wheaties that morning. I mean, that's just the way he acted. Like, he got the saltine cracker of Wheaties that morning because his wife pissed in him. But, you know, that's that's a kind of shit. And that's probably the worst that, that I had to deal with. Um, but anyways, uh, enough of that. I've, I've covered things that I wasn't going to cover on. Um... Okay, so, uh, yeah, somebody asked me if there was an extended warranty on parts for the, the 4960. Uh, not that I know of. I mean, I really don't think there is. I'm going to have John Deere come out and do the uh, pressure tests on the tractor to see that and make sure that it's, uh, it's shifting correctly. Um, a lot of people said, thank you. Uh, we missed you and stuff. Uh, a lot of people were like, hey, we were beginning to wonder what happened to you. Well, I made it quite known that I was going to be overseas. I don't understand why people didn't. Um, 
Here's, uh, here's another thing. I was told you need connections from Europe to get the IVT parts not sold in the U.S. John Deere dealers have to get from the EU John Deere dealer. Well, I do have connections over in England. George Saunders, Lord Muck. I could get any of these guys to uh, get me the parts that I need or even John the Legend. And uh, the Legend. Uh, he, he'd definitely get me the parts if I asked him to. But you know what? Uh, I don't know that I would do anything with the IVT transmission. Uh, the worst thing about an IVT transmission is someone that doesn't know how to use the IVT transmission. Uh, if you know how to use an IVT transmission, they last for 20,000 hours. But if you're an idiot and you, instead of using the throttle and the brake and you just pull back on that stick, you're going to burn it up. Just like the power shift transmission, 15 speed power shifts, they were, you know, the same thing. You can blow them things up too if you're stupid with them. But, uh, Anyway, I guess that's it for today. I do have uh, uh, a bunch of things that are going to be happening, and I'm probably just going to make another one of these videos. Uh, not today, but, um, you know, maybe tomorrow uh, on some agricultural stuff like fertilizer pricing and seed and other things because I'm, I'm more than likely going to be planting a little bit of corn this year. Because I just need to do something different, um, you know. If I if I even if I plant a hundred acres, you know, I'd be happy with that, and uh, see where it goes. It'd be fifty thousand dollars worth of worth of corn, but damn, I think that's about what it would cost me. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you next time.